While superheroes generally fight a wide assortment of villains throughout their careers, there's always that one distinct villain who's able to match the hero in every way, shape, and form. While other villains may be minor inconveniences to their hero, this one villain exists as the hero's rival, their opposite. Some would say, I'm the reverse. That's right, you guys. It's finally time we answer one of the biggest questions ever asked on this channel. How fast is Eobard Thawne, aka the CW Reverse Flash? Let's take a look at the Reverse Flash's feats and find out how fast he can really run. Just for the record before I do this though, because of how the CW's adapted the character, the way his speed's been altered, creating different timelines, and the fact that he became a paradox in Season 3 of The Flash, we'll need to break up his feats and examine the Reverse Flash as if he were three different characters. The Harrison Wells version from Season 1, the Time Remnant version from Season 2, and the current Paradox version from Season 3 and Legends of Tomorrow. So let's get a base speed stat to start with for Season 1. During his first fight with Barry in Episode 9 titled The Man in the Yellow Suit, we see Eobard running from one end of the field they're fighting on to about halfway across, tackling Barry in the process. Now this scene was filmed at a multi-purpose field known as BC Place, which, fun fact, the CW also uses as exterior shots for Star Labs. Anyway, the BC Place's soccer pitch has dimensions of 117 by 75 yards, or 107 by 69 meters. And considering that this part of the fight is shot in real time, then that means Reverse Flash was able to run about 55 yards, or about 50 meters, and tackle Barry in one second. Dividing our distance by the time it took him to cross that distance means that Eobard ran 112.5 miles per hour, or about 181 kilometers an hour in order to reach Barry. Moving on, we also see from multiple times throughout the first season that Eobard is able to move fast enough to create a convincing speed mirage of himself, which, as I established in my Zoom Top Speed video, meant you're going at least 134 miles an hour or about 215 kilometers an hour. Just in case you haven't seen that video, which you should, it's awesome, let me do a quick recap. Basically, the human eye processes the world around you as a bunch of different images that you see per second, with each image being processed so fast that it tricks your brain into merging all those images and making what we perceive as movement. So for Eobard to make a speed mirage, he'd have to be in two different places fast enough for the human eye to be unable to notice the difference. Given that 60 frames per second is fast enough for us not to notice differences in whatever we're looking at without the movements being choppy or unnatural, then a speedster creating a realistic speed mirage would have to be going, as I mentioned before, at least 134 miles an hour or about 215 kilometers an hour. Skipping over towards the end of the first season, during the fight between the Reverse Flash, Flash, Firestorm, and Green Arrow, we see Reverse Flash running up the side of Star Labs onto the roof of the building in real time. As I mentioned before, the building is based off the real-life stadium BC Place, which has a height of 204 feet, or about 62 meters. And since the shot of him running is taking place in real time, as I mentioned a second ago, then that means Eobard was able to run that distance in exactly one second. Running that distance in that amount of time means he was running at 139.091 miles per hour, or about 223 kilometers an hour. Now moving way back to the past, we learn that during his attack on a young Barry and Nora while he was fighting with the future Flash, Reverse Flash was actually invisible to the two non-speedsters in the room, with the only clue of him being there being the lightning his body was giving off. Now the human eye can register up to 250 frames per second, so in order to appear invisible, the Reverse Flash would have to be traveling at about 250 meters per second bare minimum. Converting that shows us his travel speed was about 559 miles per hour, or 900 kilometers an hour. And I know some of you are probably wondering, but wait, why is the lightning they're generating not invisible if they were invisible the whole time? Well, that's actually because the lightning they're giving off is moving at a slower speed than the speedster generating it. Otherwise, if the two were going at the same speed, either the speedster would constantly be getting struck by their own lightning, or their body would be enveloped like an energy aura from Dragon Ball Z. There's also the fact that Eobard was established to be faster than Barry pretty much all throughout Season 1. I mean, just look at how he gets left in the dust from the beginning of the season, and how the exact same thing happened towards the end of the season. So it stands to reason, then, that the speed levels generated in pretty much all of Barry's speed feats from Season 1 could also be attributed to the Reverse Flash. I mean, if Barry could do it, so could the Reverse Flash. Like the time when Barry ran around a tornado and managed to shut it down. In doing so, he was able to run at 700 miles per hour, or 1,126.54 kilometers an hour. Or the time when Barry performed a supersonic punch on Girder at 843.9 miles per hour, or about 1,358 kilometers an hour. Both of these feats fit well within Eobard's speed levels as we've seen them in the show, so it stands to reason that he could recreate those same feats. Skipping back over to the events of Episode 9, we get a simpler speed feat when we see the Reverse Flash dodge a bullet fired at him by Joe. Now according to the Internet Movie Firearm Database, the weapon Joe is using is the Beretta 92FS, which has a muzzle velocity of about 852.27 miles per hour, or about 1,371 kilometers an hour, meaning he would have to move at least that fast in order to dodge a bullet from one of those guns as it's being fired. We also learn early on in the first season that the Reverse Flash can time travel on his own, even before this timeline's Barry fully masters that ability. And as we learn when Barry tries recreating his speed when he first traveled back in 
same time, doing something like that requires you go at least 900 miles an hour or 1448.41 kilometers an hour. Throughout every incarnation of the character, we see that he has the ability to vibrate himself so fast that he can phase through people and objects. And while we're never told exactly how fast he'd have to go in order to do this, we get a clue on how fast he's going in the episode Tricksters when Barry gets a bomb strapped to his wrist and is forced to keep running or else it'll explode. If you vibrate at the natural frequency of air, your body, your cells will be in a state of excitement that should allow you to phase right through that wall, leaving the bomb on the other side. Now that explanation's nice and all, but air actually has no frequency, so this whole vibrate at the natural frequency of air thing is complete nonsense. The only other thing I can think of that he meant that would still fit with the levels of speed we've seen is that a speedster would have to move their cells at the speed of air molecules in order to phase through something. And if that's the case, then the reverse flash can vibrate his body at about 1,118.47 miles per hour, or about 1,800 kilometers an hour. All right, and with that, we find the reverse flash his top speed in season one is Wait a minute, that can't be right. In the season finale, we saw Barry keep up with, but you know, still ultimately lose to, a bloodlusted Ebar Thawne, and Barry was barely over Mach 2 when that happened. I mean, we know from interviews that season 1 Reverse Flash was slower than Zoom, so his top speed in season 1 is somewhere between Zoom's Mach 8.2 and Barry's top speed of Mach 2. So what gives? How could Barry be around the same speed as the Reverse Flash? You know what, whatever, it's probably just a mistake. Let's just move on to season 2. I'm sure they give us a bunch of other feats. We can probably balance this out. When the Reverse Flash reappears in episode 11, titled The Reverse Flash Returns, we see during this scene that he's still somewhat faster than Barry at this point in time. I mean, look, he's still leaving him in the dust. And remember, before this, Barry was able to do stuff like super speed past the turtle's powers in between blasts of two tenths of a second, and he was able to run across helicopters. Now, unfortunately, this is all we see of Eobard in this scene, so we don't really have a whole lot of feats to go off of, but still, this doesn't make any sense. I mean, look, they're practically equals. I mean, this is a young Eobard, by the way. He's definitely not at the top of his game, but he should still be a lot faster faster than Barry, not at a level where he's about Barry's equal, but where we really start to run into some problems is in Season 3 and Legends of Tomorrow. The main problem is that we haven't really seen him do anything of note in either Season 3 or in Legends of Tomorrow. We do see him time travel at the end of Flashpoint, but for the rest of the time, the Reverse Flash just sort of darts in from off screen. I mean, we don't know where he's coming from half the time, and even when we do, we don't know how far away each location is. In fact, we get very few hints about his speed in this part of his life. One of the few hints we do have comes from Sarah Lance in Episode 5 of Legends of Tomorrow, who claimed that Eobard is actually faster than Barry just off a quick glance of seeing Eobard run by. The time traveler working against us. He's a speedster. Like the Flash? Faster. Now this is clearly plot-induced stupidity here, since she's never met the Flash or Reverse Flash before this moment, but let's pretend for a second that she's right. The Reverse Flash is faster than Barry. If that's the case, then that would mean he's able to reach speeds of Mach 13.2 at a bare minimum, since Barry was able to reach those speeds by the end of Season 2. But wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense either, because if that's the case, then how was he not able to completely smoke Barry when he first traveled back in time, or when he traveled back in time in Season 2? I mean, this whole thing directly contradicts statements made by Eobard in earlier points of the Arrowverse. Your powers are almost exactly like those of the Flash. What matters is that neither of us was strong enough to defeat the other. Wait a minute. The lower than expected speed shown in feats, but the nearly equal speed in Season 1? Being about Barry's equal in Season 2? And the apparently equal levels of speed from here on out? Guys, I think this might just be another clue towards confirming the existence of a negative speed force in the Arrowverse. The negative speed force is the complete opposite of the speed force. It uses the normal speed force as a power source. Basically, if you're a negative speed force user, you can only expend as much energy as the normal speed force has. And that makes even more sense when you consider this quote from Tom Cavanaugh in a 2015 post on Entertainment Weekly's website where he stated, If you know the speed force, it's fair to say that Barry's abilities come from a positive culling of the speed force. Reverse Flash's abilities come from what Barry would call a negative culling of the speed force. And with that, you guys, I think we have the strongest proof yet that the negative speed force exists in the Arrowverse. Therefore, if we take this quote into account and we take the earlier statements made by Eobard in Season 1, then that would mean the Reverse Flash's top speed is the Flash's top speed. And as we saw at the end of Season 2, Barry can reach speeds of Mach 13.2. Alright you guys, that's my take on the Reverse Flash's top speed, and to me at least that makes a whole lot more sense than just saying sometimes the Reverse Flash is slower than Barry, sometimes he's faster, you know, because plot. If you agreed with any of my calculations, or you want to point out any feats I missed, or maybe even have your own calculations you want to throw out there, then go ahead and post them in the comments down below. Alright, I will see you guys next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to click that like button, maybe leave me a comment while you're at it, and go ahead and click that subscribe button. 
Also, don't forget to check out any of my social media pages. I've got a Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. All those links are going to be in the description below. And I've also got my last video right there in the middle of your screen. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and click it. Check it out. All right, and I will see you all next time.